It is tax saving season. In fact, it is the end of the financial year and we're in the last couple of weeks where you can make investments that will reduce your tax outgo. Uh, perhaps the time for you to uh, cut tax during the year has passed, but you can always claim a rebate uh, or a refund of tax uh, when you file your returns. Let's talk about the National Pension Scheme. It's an interesting scheme with a lot of uh, uh, nitty gritties and uh, fine-tuning possibilities. Let me introduce my guest. We've got Santosh Navlani, the Chief Operating Officer of ET Money. Uh, good evening, Santosh, and thanks so much for tuning uh, for joining us as always. Uh, let's start with what this uh, scheme offers in terms of tax saving, because that really is the operative word right now. What are the um, advantages of investing in the NPS? Yeah, so uh, Alex, before I come to the tax saving part, I think it just makes sense to have a precursor on what NPS is all about. Uh, National pension system, as it's called, is one of the best ways in the country to plan for one's retirement goals. Uh, it is one of the cheapest ways to actually save for retirement. Uh, it has the expense ratio of less than 0.1% uh, per annum for management of your uh, finances. Uh, and because of that lowest cost, I would rather say it's one of the lowest cost product in the world. Uh, it actually adds up to your returns over a long period of time in a very good way if you see NPS returns uh, of the past. And uh, it, is, it is one of the simplest product out there and a lot of conveniences or features built in, which might sometimes make it sound a bit complicated, but uh, the simplest way to use it actually can make it quite attractive product for almost everybody out there. Coming to tax wing aspect of NPS, uh, it actually started from uh, a, a kind of multiple ways where it is used to be only one of the product in uh, section 80C, uh, which is one of the most popular uh, kind of section to actually take tax benefits from. So one can invest uh, entire up to 1.5 lakh rupees uh, into NPS uh, and claim tax deduction of up to 1.5 lakh rupees uh, through section 80C. Uh, recently, kind of a few years ago, I think in 2015 or 16, if I remember correctly, it was allowed that people can actually uh, specifically invest in NPS under a different section, uh, section 80C, C, D2, or C, C, D, 1B, wherein you can actually invest up to 50K in a year and claim tax deduction separately for it. So that means uh, every uh, investor or every individual in the country can actually save up to 2 lakh rupees uh, uh, annually into NPS and actually claim tax reduction of up to 2 lakh rupees. It will translate to cat tax savings of almost 62,000 rupees 400 in a year for a highest tax bracket income uh, earning person. So it's one of the amazing ways to save taxes and the kind of returns it has given, they just add up onto the as a cherry on the uh, on top of the cake where you can actually make tons of money by saving tax first, earning a lot of uh, you know, tax-free returns and actually uh, a, a lot of advantages at the time of withdrawal as well, which we've come towards uh, as we progress in the show. I want to talk about it in terms of uh, NPS versus the other retirement scheme, which is the EPF for uh, employees. Uh, I think when it was launched, it was launched as an option for uh, people that don't earn a salary. But we'll get to that in, in just a bit. Let's talk about the key traits of the NPS. I said in the introduction that this is a scheme that allows you to fine tune this uh, based on your requirements. There are yeah. a lot of things that you can change about uh, so that it does the job that you want it to do. How would you best explain this? Yeah, so uh, I, I would say that uh, that's where you know, kind of you know, some kind of complexities come in if you really want to take advantage of it. So uh, let's talk the plain Medina requirement here, wherein uh, anybody as an individual who wishes to invest in NPS for long term has an option to keep it simple all its life and. Uh, go for something called as uh, uh, auto choice option at the time of investment, wherein you as an individual can specify that I will go with the life cycle based investment option, where as I progress uh, towards uh, uh, kind of getting older, uh, towards 50, 55, 60, my allocation towards equity investments will automatically keep coming down. Uh, uh, so there are three uh, options that uh, uh, kind of NPS gives you. 
that uh, you can choose in life cycle fund as they're called. So at the time of investment, I can choose, I want to really uh, invest as a conservative investor, as an aggressive investor, or as a moderate investor. So when you choose to be a conservative investor, only up to 25% of your money goes into equity assets, and you get an option to basically put rest of the money into corporate bonds or uh, government securities. So uh, both these corporate bonds and government securities are fairly stable and uh, reputed names in that sense, government securities, as the name suggests, is a government sovereign guarantee. So you typically don't have an interest rate default or a or any kind of default happening in that side. You know, the corporate bond side, only highly rated debt papers are allowed to get invested. Uh, and there's a kind of specified list of companies or other what kind of companies can raise debt from and uh, pension fund managers. So uh, overall, the debt portion of 75% actually provides a lot of stability and long-term uh, growth as well because of tax benefits there. And the equity portion uh, is can be only invested, like the, there are guidelines about uh, where these 25% can get invested. So only top 200 companies by market capitalization on uh, NEC or BSE uh, are the kind of stocks where fund managers can invest in. Similarly, there is a moderate option where up to 50% will go into equities and rest will go into corporate bonds and government securities. And there's an aggressive option where you can choose to basically go up to 75% in equities and rest being in, in, in debt securities through government bonds and uh, uh, corporate bonds. So uh, uh, the, the key point here is uh, when you choose the uh, uh, auto choice, uh, if you opt for an aggressive option, despite that after the age of 50, uh, the fund manager would actually work in a way that you would be deduct kind of you know getting down towards 50 percent allocation by that by the age you by the time you reach 60 years of age so basically active uh, auto choice is one of the best ways to just outsource your entire requirement to uh, kind of you know uh, uh, nps to really figure out what kind of uh, as a location you should be having for your investments for long term. And if you want to really be a bit adventurous, you have an option to actually uh, make your own choice of how much equity, how much government securities and how much corporate bond you can have. So you can actually run your own aggressive hybrid strategy, or you can run like a more of balanced approach to investments. You can also take advantage of rebalancing this uh, via switching in, switch out, switching out from equity to debt or or government securities and vice versa, and actually create better, uh, uh, you no know, kind of risk adjusted returns over a long period of time. So you can actually fine tune NPS to work like a mutual fund for your own stuff, uh, uh, or you can choose to actually uh, uh, kind of outsource that requirement by actually opting for an auto choice. So it's a blend of uh, best in my opinion, where people and actually can do very good job uh, of managing their money for retirement uh, into NPS. And the best part is because the money is locked in, which probably sometimes people feel it's not a good thing. It's a very good thing when money is locked in, you actually get a power of compounding and, uh, uh, as your advantage. And a lot of wealth can be created by just putting 2 lakh rupees every year, taxing, getting advantage of tax savings, as well as getting compounding on that side. Uh, it's a beautiful product, in my opinion, which which requires a lot of uh, you know distribution uh, a play coming into picture where a lot of retail investors can actually take advantage of this. Okay. Uh, I, I think you've summed it up really well and you've laid the foundation for the next point, which is uh, there are multiple managers of the National Pension Scheme, uh, Santosh, and uh, how do you choose the right one? And I think this is also the point where you can describe because you've shared some data with us, which hopefully we can present on the screen when you speak about it. Uh, there are uh, the performance of the various options available in aggressive, moderate, conservative, super safe have also been given for these various fund managers. How do you choose the right fund manager? Is it only rolling returns that you look at? Is it more than that? So uh, uh, what we've kind of shared uh, as a data, uh, Alex, is uh, how uh, the uh, auto choice works in the form of life cycle fund, as they're called, uh, aggressive, uh, moderate and conservative and we've looked at all the fund managers which are available in the country uh, for long periods of time. And if you look out uh, across these three options and compare returns, uh, there is no clear winner uh, on any ca any calendar year basis. Uh, uh, and there is a reason for that. Uh, you would notice that the how the fund manager under NPS can actually invest the investor's money uh, is quite restricted and kind of you know, clear uh, at the same time. So an equity, you cannot go beyond top 200 companies on the uh, uh, NSC and BSC stock exchanges, which means that only 
large, semi-large, and very large mid-cap companies can actually be part of investment portfolio. Uh, uh, second, uh, on the government security side, there is of course, there is no default possibility there as at least theoretically speaking, because there's government of India, which is backing that security and corporate bond as well. Similarly kind of companies you can invest in the corporate bonds are extremely very, very restrictive and clarified by PFRDA. So uh, when the investment universe is so restrictive and all these uh, fund managers are competing for it and putting money, they are bound to really uh, kind of, you know, have similar investments, uh, uh, big any fund manager in that sense. So uh, there's a reason the returns have been fairly similar, even if the kind of uh, returns are probably a bit different by 0.3, 0.4% over long periods of time. That is, in my opinion, very, very incidental and can actually be on the different side next year. So uh, the fund manager may not have a very large role to play when it comes to NPS because they're like index funds, uh, I would say. Uh, the way you basically cannot go wrong when you choose an index fund in a mutual fund. Similarly, you will not go wrong much uh, in terms of returns compromisation by 0 0.2, 0 0.3% at max. So, uh, and if you look at over long periods of time, and HDFC, ICICI, SBI, uh, as fund managers have always been amongst top two, top three performers all the time. So uh, it wouldn't really mean that you should go for these three names as well. Uh, you can go uh, to any other name, which basically gives you comfort because ultimately the money is getting managed almost in the same way, uh, uh, irrespective of the fund manager, honestly. And uh, it's broadly all double digit uh, returns that you're getting, Santosh. So irrespective of the manager, the, the fund and the scheme seems to be appropriate for a retirement scheme, uh, which is giving you equity like uh, returns, right? Even for the super safe uh, product and for the conservative product. But uh, yeah. I, I'm just trying so to just get... Clarification, just a clarification, yeah. super safe is basically something we've just provided as an option for somebody who wants to be conservative, but an extra conservative compared to 25% equity allocation. So this is the theoretical calculation that we have done. It is not something which is available as a as a lifestyle fund choice uh, under auto choice of uh, NPS. Understood. Yeah. Okay, good. Thanks for that clarification because you mentioned at the top of the show where you said aggressive, uh, moderate and conservative are the three options available. Uh, I, I do want to talk about uh, the redemption because this is something that a lot of people talk about when it comes to the NPS, right? Um, let's first talk about what you need to bear in mind for redemption and then we'll talk about the tax implications of it. There are a few options available for you when you are redeeming as well, right Santosh? Yeah, so uh, I think you know one of the best, one of the better ways to look at NPS Alex would be about you know it's a long term money, it's your retirement savings. You should not touch it uh, till time you retire, which again as per PFRD guidelines is the age of sixty. You have to keep money invested till the age of sixty, uh, and uh, oppose that you can withdraw it as per the redemption rules. We'll come to that. Uh, but if people want to redeem money uh, uh, midway, then uh, look at this that NPS basically has a ten year lock in for you. So uh, you cannot withdraw your money uh, till 10 years. Uh, after 10 years, uh, if, you are, uh, if you want to withdraw some money there, uh, you can take up to 2.5 lakh rupees as entire money out if, you're, if your investment actually is uh, less than 2.5 lakh rupees. And if it's more than 2.5 lakh rupees, then you can't withdraw more than 20% as lump sum. Uh, the 80% minimum has to be converted into annuities. So uh, basically, if you, if you look at it, uh, uh, for right reasons, uh, PFRD doesn't really want people to uh, play opportunistic in terms of you know putting money in this in this scheme, take tax benefits, and then not really work towards retirement corpus. There are some rules around where premature withdrawals are allowed, uh, where you can borrow, kind of take money uh, in extreme emergencies and things like that, which is again very very uh, clarified what kind of rules it is allowed in. But you should look at NPS as a real long term retirement savings product for yourself and not touch it. The real uh, 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 kind of you know withdrawal which comes into picture for most people will be at the age of sixty. Uh, so uh, and uh, at this in in this uh, there is this option available that you can withdraw up to sixty percent as a lump sum, which is completely tax free. So uh, uh, if you look at it, uh, NPS then falls as one of the only products out there in the market today for tax wing where uh, you basically follow a triple E regime, exempt, 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 where you can actually get tax benefit at the time of investment. You can earn tax-free return every year on it. And at the time of withdrawal, up to 60% of your money is in, under exempt category where you can withdraw as, as lump sum uh, without paying any taxes. The 40% remaining money, uh, you can opt to convert into annuities. And uh, I think it's one of the greatest features, which sometimes misunderstood. You actually are 
putting money for retirement so that in your old age you can get pension uh, like you know uh, the private citizens of the country don't have the advantage of social security and this 40% when you invest and do annuities or purchase annuities you can actually can earn monthly income uh, for rest of your life uh, which actually can be very very handy now this annuity portion is taxable uh, uh, at the at the at the marginal rate of uh, uh, you know rate of tax that you will fall into. So if you are somebody who's earning uh, 10 lakh rupees or more in a year, you will probably fall in 30% tax bracket. So that entire uh, annuity will be added to your taxable income and taxed accordingly in that sense. Uh, but yeah, so basically the 60% money is lump sum, completely available to you to take out at the age of, at the age of 60 and 40% can be converted redemption or into, into annuities. There is another uh, uh, option coming from PFRD recently where they've extended the age up to 70. So you can actually extend and not withdraw at 60, can continue investing or holding on to your investment, uh, which you have done in the past till 65, 70 and opt in to withdraw again, 60% is lump sum and 40% in converted annuities. So it's a, it's a beautiful way where uh, you actually can earn a large portion of uh, your retirement corpus completely tax-free uh, and that too the returns which are almost 50 percent beyond uh, the ppf epf uh, products that we are aware of for so many years uh, it's a handsome uh, return uh, generating product which should be part of everybody's retirement kitty in my opinion uh, and, and just a last point because we recently talked about elss as well when you're talking about the overall atc uh, tax deductions or, or deduction from the taxable income that you can do uh, and this is just the clincher, right? This is the bottom line. Uh, Santosh, in your opinion, if you were to peg, for example, the EPF and the VPF, if you put those two together with the recent reduction to 8.1%, you talk about ELSS as an option to maximize your savings uh, uh, in equity and the lock-in of three years and those benefits that we spoke about. And you have NPS, which according to you stands out or do you think that you can do a combination of all three? Yeah, so uh, in investments, Alex is always uh, to each one uh, to his own in that Absolutely. sense. That's what I would say. But you know, uh, if you if you look at it, if you're somebody, and many people are in the country, so when it comes to ELS investments, one of the best ways to invest shortest lock-in period of just three years. So if you're somebody who is not yet in a mindset to uh, lock in their money for life, like this age of sixty, then ELS is always wins the battle simply because it's just three year lock-in. Uh, but if you're somebody who can uh, come into mindset to invest for long term and that too only for retirement, uh, then uh, I think NPS wins the battle uh, for two reasons. One is lock the, uh, the mandatory lock-in period will, will mean that you would stay invested, give the power of compounding to your money and actually create very handsome uh, returns on your portfolio. And number two is uh, the tax advantage on the NPS is far better compared to ELSS today because in ELSS, uh, uh, when you withdraw after three years, four years, five years, whenever you choose to, uh, you would actually be uh, in, in, uh, uh, kind of taxed uh, for that gain if uh, your taxable, if your if your long term capital gains uh, made in a, in that financial year are beyond one lakh rupees. So technically speaking, you will be you'll be paying tax because many people after five, six years of investments may be able to generate one lakh rupees of long-term capital gains very easily. So uh, you would actually pay tax on the portion uh, which you would not pay if you are an NPS. And uh, when you do NPS SIP, uh, 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 it's probably more convenient because in ELSS, every investment is locked in for three years. So if you're doing SIP, you will probably remember, need to remember that what amount of units are out of lock-in after three years and which amount of units not lock, out of lock-in. Whereas in NPS, you are very sure that uh, you can do SIP in NPS for life and actually withdraw all your money uh, the moment you turn 60 or rather 60% of the money can be withdraw, withdrew uh, uh, completely at the time of 60 years of age. So it's not technically that every investment is locked in for 60 years. So there's a difference between NPs and ELSS. Uh, I would say that uh, NPs probably kind of features out far more better option for people reaching their late 30s who are kind of getting into retirement mode planning uh, at that point of time. NPs makes a better bet in my opinion today. Fantastic. I, I think this has been a very insightful conversation and hopefully people benefit from this. Of course, uh, like you mentioned at the top of the show, there's also the uh, the first E of the three E's, right? Which is your ATC plus ATC CD. That extra 50,000 pop is also there. Uh, and yeah. so this is very beneficial. Thank you so much, Santosh, for joining and for taking the time. Thanks, Alex. All right. Now, there is a lot more on the program. Do stay tuned. We're going to be talking about sectoral and thematic funds next after this short break. <laughs> 